Hello YouTubers, I've got another video for you here. My microwave died. This is my second microwave. Another one that's as ancient as, ancient as the hills. Almost as old as the other one. This one's so old that the white, this was white at one time, but due to use and ultraviolet light exposure and heat, it's turned yellow. This one's completely dead. And as you can see from the date here, this one was made in 1990. Another old classic. This one's gone dead. I'm assuming it's probably switches that have gone bad. We're going to find out. Shall we? Okay, we got the, uh, the side off this unit here. And I've done work on this before. I changed that magnetron once. It says LG on it. That's a Panasonic microwave with an LG magnetron. Very good. Uh, first thing we're going to check is we're going to get our meter out here. And we're going to check the fuse. See whether the fuse is blown. If the fuse is blown, then I'll know to look for uh, shorting switches and, and primary interlock switches. And that beep tells me that the fuse is not blown. Secondary to the fuse is a thermal cutout. Thermal cutouts drop. Oh, that magnetron is warm. I bet you the thermal cutout is. Uh, we've been cooking with it and it shut off and then it wouldn't start up. I bet you the thermal cutout has, has gone open. Let's just put the meter on here and see if it beeps. And it doesn't beep. So, what that tells me is my thermal cutout has failed. I'm just going to uh, cool this thing down a bit here and see whether it will reset itself. Otherwise, I may have to coax it into resetting. Uh, some of these units would reset themselves. Other ones, you actually had to take the thermal cutout apart and pop the little uh, bimetallic strip back by hand. They were a one-time. They could be reset, but they once they tripped, they wouldn't reset themselves. I'm just going to pull this thing apart here and, and see whether this is a re self-resetting or whether it's one I have to reset manually. So we've taken out the thermal cutout. This is the unit here and it does not reset itself. I've cooled it down and it's still open. So I have to bend these two little tabs up here on the side and then I'm going to open up the thermal cutout and I'll show you how to reset the thing. This is a little disc that you push with a something, a screwdriver or something to pop. Well, I'll show you. Let me get this thing apart and I'll show you how to do it. So to open up the uh, thermal cutout I've just bent the tabs up a bit and I just need to uh, pop it out from its the holder and inside here this is a this plastic uh, this plastic cover is actually an insulator that insulate that protects the uh, the switch from shorting out so we're just going to remove that for now and we just have to there's a couple little clips on the side here we just have to kind of spread this a little bit and this will pop through pop down and as the switch comes apart you'll find that there's a little I'm going to turn it over there's a little disc inside here, a little plate. And how this works is when, it, when it, there's a little button in here. If you see this little button, when that button is pressed, when this button gets pressed, it turns off the switch. It opens the switch. See the contacts there when I press the button? It opens the contacts. So what happens when the disc, when it overheats, this is a bimetallic strip, and it, 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 it flexes, and all you gotta do to reset it, just to pop it back. Then you'll hear a little click when I do it, if you listen. Where's that lens, okay? There it is. There, that little click. That is now reset this bimetallic strip to its um, normal position, so it is no longer pressing on that little button. So then we take the unit, set it back in, place our heat transfer um, aluminum casing on it, place our insulator on the top again like this, and then once again put the top cover on, put the little tabs through the, uh, the little slots on here, and we are good to go. Now, if I if I really felt like it, I could bend these little tabs over. I get maybe I will just a little bit. They're not really necessary, and if you do them too many times, they will break. It's just kind of to hold it together. Now I can take the thermal cutout and I can put it back in the microwave, and the unit will work until it overheats again. So let's do that, okay? So I'm mounting the uh, thermal cutout again. I realign the screws up here. It's important to make sure that your insulator is in place between the magnetron and the thermal cutout. One, it provides electrical insulation 
from uh, the magnetron itself, but secondly, it also reduces the rate of heat transfer because you don't want this thing tripping prematurely, right? So now we're going to connect the uh, the power leads here again, and now you see if I take my meter and I'm in, I'm still in continuity mode. If I touch my meter on here, you'll hear we have continuity here, the same as on the fuse. So we know that we now have continuity, and we can plug the microwave in. And we shall have power. Well, there we have it. I can now set the clock on this thing. Yeah, that's good enough for testing. Yeah, I'll just put it on for a couple seconds. And what are we gonna do here? Shut the. I don't want the thing running full power because I don't have anything in it. But we'll just put it on for a few seconds here. There, three seconds. That ought to do it. There we go. The unit is now working, and uh, that's all there is to it. That's how you fix. A microwave that has had the thermal cutout trip. That's how you reset a non auto resetting thermal cutout on a Panasonic microwave. Thanks for watching.